Welcome back to YouTube. This is Kamikaze Games, and I am going to show you how to animate like a mouse. So we're gonna have, we're gonna, before I can really animate that well, I need to have some characters in my scene. So we're just gonna set up a random scene using random characters. So there's Sonic the Hedgehog, Tails, and Jeffrey Earnhardt. Okay. And the evil guy. Oh no, what is he gonna do? He's going to foil the plans. So what I have done recently is started adding backgrounds to my pictures. And uh, they've gotten prettier and prettier as time has gone on, as you can see. So now they're in a happy, happy world. But you can't see the backgrounds to the slide like this, so you don't know where your characters are going to be at. Well, this is where cropping comes into play like a mouse. So let me just cut that part out. And as you can see, they're all happy. They're all here, except for the evil guy who is going to foil the plans. Now, more recently than before, I have had the characters beginning to look like their actual size in comparison with each other. So Tails is going to be slightly smaller than Sonic, and the humans are going to be bigger than both of them. And then you can have your characters' personalities really come out with height. So yeah, here's our scene. Now, what's going to happen? The evil guy is going to call for his helicopter, so... Just gonna have a picture of a helicopter. I'm gonna try to find one with a good background so I can cut it out like a boss. Oh wait, oh, there it went. <laughs> right at the last second, you piece of garbage. I was about to use the low res one. Oh my goodness, that's huge. You can go to height and select a smaller height so that you don't have to deal with gigantic images all the time, but you can always just use the thingamajig there. Now, I really don't make objects relative to their actual size, because if I did, this would probably... all you'd see is the helicopter. Crap, did not work in the way that I wanted to. That's good enough. We'll just crop that part out. Cropping like a mouse. Okay, now the helicopter's already, and that stuff's on the top too. Wow, this is just being a real jerk. It is not helping me educate the thousands on how to use PowerPoint. All right, so now that the helicopter is up there, we're gonna have it swoop in and pick up the evil guy. So once we'll get to animations, this is so much simpler in 2007's PowerPoint. And now the helicopter comes in. Now I want this descent to be slow, but have it happen quickly here. So three seconds should work. And the smooth ending. So so that it looks like he's actually slowing down to a stop instead of just abruptly ending his movement. So now that, that that's come down, we're gonna have a rope drop down for the evil guy to cling on to. So rope. I use this image in a different PowerPoint. It was pretty epic. Now, I haven't figured it out how, how, how to do it. I'm pretty sure there is a way, but I don't know it, that you can have a PowerPoint freeze where its animations are going to be at an end, but you just have to judge off of the arrow. So what I'm going to do is have the arrow c um, rope come down, so make it long enough for the evil guy to grab onto. Um, make it obvious that that's a rope. All right, so now when this comes down, it's that's really obvious. It's clear that the rope is there, so we can't allow that. Got to bring this image to the front so it goes in front of this image as it comes on down. So now we're gonna put in the appear animation. I'm gonna use a different animation for this actually. Um, more entrance effects. I like this box so much. 
so I think it'll show you what it looks like. Yep. It's not showing me. What a piece of garbage. I'm just gonna have to assume that I know which one it is, so... Mm, float down. There. There. It'll it'll do for now. So just make it shorter and figure out where things are. So you can set that to go with the previous so that it'll come on while it's the helicopter is coming down. Or you can set it to go after where once that comes down, once that animation stops, that animation begins. That's really convenient for stringing together stuff and making PowerPoints look pretty full. I'm spending so much time on this. You can also set this to go with previous immediately, and then everything will go at once. Go from current slide, and then when it goes, you don't even need to click anything, and it'll all just automatically go all by itself. I'm gonna make it stop transitioning so that that crap stops. Actually, let me keep that on because I'm just gonna go right to the next part. So then, you can have, we're gonna have the evil guy go up to his escape helicopter. So once the line comes on, and then lines are simply used, they don't go all wacky, so. And then after previous, so that we don't have to click anything. So the helicopter comes down, the rope comes down, the evil guy goes up, and then we're going to duplicate this slide move the helicopter down here delete these two images and have the helicopter go up again so and now you can see how long each animation is going to last I hate this advanced timeline so much so you can see how long your images are going to be going for these ones, for example, will go for six seconds. So when you go to your transitions, you can set this to be seven seconds. And then when we get to the actual slideshow, and then they leave. And that's how you do basic animations on PowerPoint. Now these are very, very basic animations. There are a lot of things that you can do with these. You can have objects flying. You can have things coming in with other things. You can have characters appearing and disappearing, falling into portals, spinning through portals, going through one portal and coming out the other by using um, dual crop pictured. Dual crops picture, where I will explain that quick. Okay, so here's what you gotta do. You crop the image that you want, deselect, copy, undo, and then paste. Now, this image is in front of this image, and it's only half of it. So if you have your character go in that direction, whoop, He'll go behind that part of the background so that if you have like a wall that you want your character to go behind as it goes through the scene, that's how you can do that. I do that in most car chases. I do that when characters are going through rooms. I do that all, all the time. It's an easy thing to do once you figure that out and it really makes your PowerPoints look more realistic. And the more realistic you can get your PowerPoints to look the better off you're going to end up being. So in the next video, I am going to talk about putting everything together into one long, endless PowerPoint like the ones that I make. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time!